Here's 10 creative ways to make money with Unreal Engine. Make sure to stick around to the end where I reveal some secrets most people haven't even thought about. Maybe one of these ideas will end up making you some decent money. Who knows? But first, I need to make some money for myself because rent and groceries aren't so cheap anymore, are they? Seriously, it feels like I can't walk into the grocery store without having to spend a ton of money now. $4 for a tin of spam, are you kidding me? It shouldn't be so expensive to make kimchi fried rice, man. It's so good. So if you're interested in learning more about Unreal Engine, and I'm assuming you are because you've clicked on this video, you can check out my Environment Artist Survival Kit, where you're going to learn how to create a beautiful environment like the one you see on your screen right here. I also have a course that teaches you how to make anime style textures in Substance Painter, and you get a nice little discount when you buy both at the same time. So I'll leave a link in the description for those. Now let's get into the video. Okay, so I want to talk about some easy stuff first. Let's start with selling assets on the Unreal Engine Marketplace. The Epic Marketplace is a great place to be if you've got some assets just lying around from previous projects or if you even have some extra time on hand. Try aiming for non-specific assets that can be used on a broad range of projects and make them appealing to the vast majority of customers, as these can be particularly profitable. Now, there's much debate over how likely sellers are to make consistent assets on the marketplace, but you can rest assured know that there are many customers looking to buy ready-made assets to save some of their time, as well as budget. Now, when I say budget, I mean that even AAA studios typically will much rather pay $5 for a simple model with textures and LODs rather than pay a modeler, I don't know, $25 an hour to create it from scratch. I'm just making up these numbers. So some great ways in which you can determine whether an asset will be successful is by asking yourself, will this save someone time? Did I put some effort into the branding and presentation of it? Am I providing the customer with value in the form of after sale support and updates? And is this generic enough to be used in various projects? When creating assets, from my experience, it's also crucial that you set a fair price and provide fair using licenses. Out of every sale, you will pocket about 70% while Epic receives the rest. While this method isn't quite likely to consistently like pay for rent or something, the main advantage is that you'll be able to upload your assets and pretty much forget about them. I have a few assets uploaded to various sites and they generate me anywhere from like $100 to $200 a month without any effort at all. I've completely forgot about them. Not a bad passive income stream if you ask me. And speaking of passive income streams, I actually have a huge series on creating passive income, so be sure to check out that video in the description as well. So for selling assets, your sales will just round up at the end of the month and go directly into your bank account. If you're curious about how much money you can make, the general consensus between sellers is that you'll receive more than you expect, but less than you like. However, a lot of people have made a decent career out of this. Here's one that not a lot of people know about, is selling your parts of your game or code to other developers. So in game development, one of the golden rules is saving as much time as you can. Outsourcing many parts of the game and using ready-made assets is the way to go in most cases. Otherwise, most games will take years to finish. Well, they take years anyway, but they'll take even longer. And by the time they've launched, these games aren't relevant anymore. This is a big problem in game design. It's easy to see how you could pick certain parts of your games to make some quick cash and help your fellow developers save time on their own project. So you could sell things like icons, scripts, APIs, HUD designs, like special effects, and some rendering engine scripts as well. You could sell these individually or bundle them together into various packages. Some great places to sell these are TurboSquid, the Unreal Engine and Unity marketplaces, itch.io, and the game dev market. The great part about this method is that it doesn't really require a lot of effort on your part. You don't really have to worry about creating projects from scratch, but rather upload anything you think people would find valuable out of the things that you've already made as a part of your game dev process. Even if you're starting out and learning how to do different things, your small projects could be of use for someone, even if it's just for them to see what your process looks like. So here's a fun one. Let's talk about dev locks. Now, if you've been studying Unreal Engine for a while now, there's almost no way you haven't watched a devlog. Developers are recording their progress and creating their games and uploading them on YouTube for other people to watch. It's a fantastic way to keep track of your evolution, connect with like-minded individuals, and receive their support during your dev journey, and provide people with informational and entertaining content. It's a win-win, honestly. If you think that there's no money to be made in YouTube and you miss the ship for creating like a profitable YouTube channel, I think you should reconsider. Making a living solely out of YouTube can be really challenging. It is, I do it, this is my full-time job. But honestly, it doesn't 
take as long as you think. And before long, you will see some extra cash flow from each month from your videos. It just takes a lot of time and practice. And since you already have a YouTube channel dedicated to your game dev passion, you could always start filming short tips, tricks, videos, or even like full-blown tutorials for the things you do well. Not only that, YouTube is an amazing vehicle for selling your products and your game. So as a game developer, it does make a lot of sense to start a YouTube channel. So I wanted to talk about freelancing for a second. Creating a quick account on sites like Upwork or Fiverr will open up a lot of possibilities for you. There are many people looking to accomplish small tasks or projects in Unreal Engine, and you'll be able to fill some of your time with them for sizable profits, especially such a specialized job like Unreal Engine. The jobs you can find range from creating simple cutscenes, doing arc viz, small assets and environments, or writing simple code for all types of issues. There are really no limits to how many jobs you can apply to, and you get to work on your own time from the comfort of your own home, and still get to improve your skills in the process. It's a great way to keep working, but keep your skills sharp and make sure you don't stagnate. There are many advantages for working freelance jobs in the domain of your expertise, but the most important one is that you'll face a myriad of problems that you get to solve and improve your own abilities for when you decide to do it full time or when aiming for like a promotion or something. Everyone loves a Swiss army knife and this holds especially true in the workplace. So for people who like teaching like myself and educating people, let's talk about tutoring or teaching classes. If you're fairly confident in your skills and understanding of the development pipeline, you could spend your time teaching others what you already know. You could structure and create short, simple classes and post them on sites like Udemy or Skillshare and then wait for the cash to roll right into your wallet. I mean, it's not that simple, but you get the idea. Alternatively, if you have a more hands-on approach to teaching, there are many sites where you can register as a tutor and offer one-on-one -on -one classes to people who want to learn what you know. The classes can be held exclusively online and you get to set your own hourly price for what you think your knowledge is worth. There are a couple of great places to start. You can try like tutor.com and takelessons.com. All you need to do is set up a tutor profile and then decide the hours in which you're available. Your students will come to you and book your lessons. Now, what about creating games? I get this question asked a lot. Creating a game using Unreal Engine that people will want to play is a lot of hard work. It's a massive undertaking, but that's a given. But the main reason you started learning Unreal Engine in the first place was your love for the video game industry. At least I'm assuming anyway. Unreal Engine is in itself a game engine. Games is what it does best. While creating a game from scratch and supporting yourself with the profits can sometimes be a really massive task, some of your side projects could bring you some considerable cash on the side. You don't exactly have to code the new Witcher to capitalize on your game dev skills. Statistically, one in five indie games on Steam makes more than $50,000, with the median lifetime profit sitting somewhere around $4,000. Obviously, game dev is a massive umbrella of stuff that you need to learn, and it is very overwhelming. And on top of that, a lot of luck is involved. I wouldn't recommend this as your starting place for making money with Unreal Engine, but as a good end game, and if you're really passionate about it, I mean, go for it. But Thomas, these are all so obvious, man. Give me something better. All right, creating music videos. Okay, hear me out. I feel like focusing on game development only when you know how to use Unreal Engine might be just detrimental to your finances. Unreal Engine is an amazing tool for video production, and it's a common occurrence for it to be used in the creation of short cinematic videos, like music videos for instance. The greatest thing about this is that there are as many music genres as bugs that you get as working as a beginner in Unreal. What I'm trying to say is that the possibilities are endless, and it's certainly a lot easier to make creative music videos with the tools provided by Unreal Engine, let's say, than let's say After Effects, which has very limited 3D editing capabilities. While it's totally true that a music video would take you a lot of time, and it doesn't come easily, especially if you've never done it before, you can use your creativity and leverage the things that you already do well. Music videos can get as simple or as complex as you want or what the client wants, and depending on the genre and the artist you're working with, you could certainly make do with the skills that you already have. In video production, and especially music video production, you can earn anything from like $50 to $500 a day, according to Payscale. So here's another one you might not have thought of, creating stereoscopic panoramas and footage. 360 videos and panoramas are a really big thing right now, and they go for quite exorbitant prices on the internet. What? And luckily, with your new Unreal Engine skills, you don't need a stereoscopic camera to take them, which is a huge advantage over other creators. 
Usually these assets take a lot of effort to make and the equipment is really expensive. So it would be wise to profit from the fact that you can create them rather easily with no real additional costs. You can even recycle your already made environments and create a couple of quick 360 panoramas or create new ones from scratch and focus your efforts on inducing a sense of wonder in your potential buyers. There are a bunch of sites you can upload to like my360shop.com and roundme.com. I also get a lot of questions about virtual environments, so let's talk about those for a second. Virtual environments are all the rage right now, and I don't see how the fascination with them is going to stop anytime soon. From small environments like famous interiors and rooms with hidden stories, or eerie places that haunt people's dreams, the possibility to create virtual worlds in which people can immerse themselves are really endless. Not to mention being able to walk through a digital space you created must be exhilarating and I can think of no better or more motivating creativity exercise than this one since it has such a particular and fascinating end result. In my opinion, people are just beginning to discover the possibilities of virtual environments. More and more people are being captivated by this technology every day, and you can easily find clients for your projects on sites like Sketchvibe, for instance. This is a growing and emerging market. And if you're really interested in VR, then I suggest you start getting in on it now, because it is still a very, very young space. So we've mentioned VR, but what about AR? Now, following the trend of capitalizing on people's needs for escapism, Augmented reality apps are quite easy to do in Unreal Engine. Well, when I say quite easy, I mean relatively quite easy compared to everything else I've listed. Once you get familiar with the process, there's an untapped market out there full of financial possibilities for people who take the plunge and put some effort into learning how to create these apps. Now, these apps can be as simple or complex as you want, ranging from quirky Instagram filters to complete mobile games such as Pokemon Go and Ingress Prime. And the best part, they are super fun to create and you can even share them with your friends. Yet another niche where AR is really hot right now is actually e-commerce. Many brands use AR to give their customers a better sense of the products that they're buying. And the apps usually go for pretty steep prices, even the more simple ones. A great place to start learning how to create AR apps is Coursera and sellmyapp.com. Of course, this list is great, but it doesn't really scratch the surface into the actual details. So if you want to learn more, like how to create a passive income stream, how to set up social media and start growing with a lot of followers and how to sell your first product, feel free to check out my completely free passive income series for digital artists that I mentioned earlier. I'll leave a link in the description. Okay, thanks guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.